a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. Next week on Sunday, I'm going to be back, a different person, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be sharing my sentiment. And it's not because I got my booster shot. So, the usual PSA, guys, if you can get the vaccine, go get the vaccine, get that booster shot. But tomorrow, Mikhail. What is happening tomorrow? Adele is releasing her first single. <gasps> she is back. Oh my God. Adele is Please. back. I've been, you know, I've been listening to Skyfall on repeat every day after I leave work. It's just, I blast it in my car. Makes sense. And I'm like, Adele, it's been a while. Give me another Skyfall, please. Well, her new album is called 30. Uh, you know, as usual, she oh goes God. by her age. And uh, it's going to be released sometime in November. Not too long, not too far away. I believe less than a month away. And um, her first single tomorrow, when she said Can't that, wait. we were like... Oh I can't, my I, god. I can't wait to get sad again. Oh my. <laughs> what has god. upset you, Adele, to make for Her you to make divorce. this? Her divorce. Oh. She actually said that. we're said getting that. a banger. <laughs> we're getting a banger. It's a not a breakup like uh what's her name? Taylor Swift. This no. is a divorce. So you know it's going to be good. It's a divorce album. I mean, yeah, the story is actually sad, but the point is, like Mikhail said, we're yeah. going to be getting some really good songs starting with tomorrow. Oh my god. And she actually said that she is using the album to explain the divorce to her son. Mashallah. That, I mean, that is so creative. That is so personalized. It's, it's quite so interesting. Adele, you know? It's so Adele, just like you said. Again, yeah. it's very interesting for her to say that. So, you know, good for her and good for the entire population of the earth who are interested in Adele and her music because, like you said, we're going to be getting new Adele song. Are you guys as excited as we are? Texas 4215, Exalat or do. But what you should be excited about is this uh, this hour of the afternoon cut up mm-hmm. uh, but before we go into uh, some of the stories i forgot to give you these i, I made a trip down to jordan and i got little oh, yeah, goodies did. so uh first off this one's from japan all the way from japan these are uh demon slayer crackers wow i love them <laughs> uh also also, also i love gifts guys jujitsu kaizen napkins oh my god this is it right here baby <laughs> that is that is amazing <laughs> And that also, absolutely from amazing. Jordan, mm-hmm. we got you some uh, Dead Sea Mud. Dead Sea Mud. Yeah, great for your skin That's from what, what I hear. everybody needs. Honestly, this is so sweet of you, Mikhail. Thank you so much. So excited Anytime. to get deep into those over the weekend. But for now, guys, get excited for the afternoon. Kind of kicking it off with a celebration. You've heard of the celebration many times. And we're back again. Delving deep into it. It obviously revolves some food. Because what is the afternoon? Cut up if we're not talking about food exactly. or the MCU and we do have some MCU news because Paul Rudd from Ant-Man he's been praising Jonathan Majors as Kang in the upcoming Ant-Man movie and Kang himself at Jonathan Majors was asked do you kill Ant-Man and he has an answer to that okay I want to get into that mm-hmm. also Sony seems to be uh, have seems to have registered a new patents for a customizable controller that people are comparing to the Nintendo Wii U. That's very Mm. bizarre. Also, Netflix expanding its merchandise uh, empire with Walmart as they are working on creating customizable merchandise for some of their most more iconic franchises like Squid Game, Stranger Mm -hmm. Things, and even The Witcher. That and so much more, guys. Don't forget to join in the conversation for today. 4215. It's Lock or Do right here on the Afternoon Cut. What's the date? What's the date? What's the date? What are we celebrating today? Today we are celebrating none other than Dessert Day. We've done it so many times, but we decided to take a little bit of, um, you know, a different route this time. Okay, we obviously have to ask, what's your favorite dessert? Mikhail, you can tell us, what's your favorite? For me, it's always got to be the classic good old chocolate chip cookie. I I agree. If you do it right, and I, I agree. And, and a shout out to RR's wife, mm-hmm. she has a little baking business on the side. And once a month, when I get my salary, I put like 100, 200 dirhams on the side <laughs> to order some of that homemade cookies. Love and that. I, and I, I never regret it. It's so delicious. I mean, I don't blame you. Every once in a while, I got these weird, weird cravings for some really good chunky chocolate chip cookies. And I feel like it's so hard to nail a chunky but also soft 
chocolate I've chip cookie. I've seen cookies. those videos where it's like 18 hour cookie. I'm like, who spends 18? And then there's like a 50 hour cookie. I'm like, no, no, no. This. I'll tell you <laughs> why. It's about freezing them because apparently, I yeah. mean, the sugars aside, different different types of sugars, the flour ratio, etc., all of those aside, apparently putting it in the freezer or putting it in the fridge actually makes a difference. Again, I'm not a food scientist, so I cannot say much about it, but I've seen plenty of videos and that's probably why it's called 18 hour. I'm pretty sure it took them like 45 minutes to make or even less and then the next 16 hours is just spent in the fridge and then the next 15 20 minutes in the oven okay i can't have that enough patience by then i'd eat the cookie dough in the fridge i don't blame you either <laughs> i mean cookie dough itself is really good but just yeah. a disclaimer if you're gonna have uh you know raw cookie dough try to omit the uh egg yolk that's one thing or the eggs entirely and if you're gonna have flour as in raw flour make sure you actually cook the flour a little bit just toast them i remember there was a superstition it's not a superstition it's because you can get salmonella from it you can actually okay. get sick that, from that's it. the thing yeah that was that right. is the thing but we asked some of our own followers what are their favorite desserts and four two one five etisalat or do answer us tell us what are your favorite desserts we've got Toda who says tiramisu cheesecake tarts that oh. is amazing cheesecake tarts and tiramisu i want to like, try baked so cheesecake i've seen that they're once. amazing yeah let me tell you something i feel like both are amazing but there's just something really nice about a baked cheesecake because cheesecake is normally a cold mm -hmm. palette you know but for it to be baked i'm like okay you, what do you have to do to make it look that good you know it's just that it, it's a little bit harder simply because you need to um, kind of work with the oven and sometimes the oven and the cheesecake might not cooperate you might get cracks one of my favorite cheesecakes ever even though I'm not supposed to be eating cheesecakes because my tummy cannot tolerate them um, is my cousin's cheesecake Esma shout out to her I don't think she's listening I think she's taking a nap she's been working really hard at work and she makes the best cheesecakes ever I'm not just saying that because she's my cousin I mean like objectively she speaking, got a small business she used to but then she ah. started working okay so when she started working she kind of had to like put it aside and um, stick with working so you missed out on that Mikhail but maybe I can ask her to I don't you know, mind yeah I'll put, down, I'll, do, I'll put down a pre-order. I love homemade desserts. People who make very special recipes mm -hmm. is always a personal favorite. Mm -hmm. I actually had the, a, one from uh, my Instagram story. A shout out to Coach. She says, Choco Fonda Fondue. No, sorry. Choco Fonda Cake. Yum. Fondant is so good. Even though when you order them at restaurants, it might, they might go like, mm, it's going to take an extra 20 minutes. I'm like, take your time. I'm here. I'm here. I came I'm all the way for this. Exactly. We also <laughs> have a repetition of tiramisu low this cheesecake, Kinder cookies, chocolate brownies, and eclairs. Yummy, yummy. I think so I'm, I think I'm going to go down a dessert shop today, treat myself. I, I agree. You <laughs> I should have, definitely should. I have two of my friends who, mm -hmm. who sent me a message, and I told them, what's your, what's your favorite dessert? And they're like, you. <laughs> like, like get, chill, guys. I appreciate it. There's that, you know that term, you said it once, you're like, Exactly. I, I, you know what? I love it. I love their energy. Oh my God. But I had to ask a different question to my followers as well. And yes. Mikhail, you went all out on this I one. Attacked. I have a bone to pick with you. And I asked because we have to take a different uh, route, right? Yeah. We've been doing this uh, celebration every year and we always ask, what's your favorite dessert? But guys, tell us what's your least favorite dessert. And Mikhail, I wish you had like more dramatic music because that's exactly what I need right now. Not something chill. I'm afraid. <laughs> he says Lgemat. Shuf. Now, Lgemat, it's... it's 4215. <laughs> Join me here. Let us attack Mikhail for his... It's pretty good, but it's not like when I have a sweet tooth. It's like, I want to go and get Lgemat. So that's why... It, it feels no. like it's in my least favorite. No, that's exactly what happens to me. I know we have people have different tastes, but honestly, when I get my sweet tooth and I'm like, I want the game up, that actually happens to me. I don't have that, unfortunately. For me, it's brownies or cookies or Baskin Robin ice cream. It's just, look, like, yeah, math is not in my list. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> just, I don't know what to say. And this one, this one, I know you did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you ruined my weekend, Mikhail. He no. says mango ice cream. If you guys remember, Mikhail did say that his he does not like mangoes, which is a whole issue in itself. Yes. But now he had to go very personal and says mango ice cream. And the reason why I say it's personal because 
mango gelato or mango ice cream is like my utmost favorite thing. That not, I literally eat mango gelato once a week. That's how much I love it. You see, I, you know, because I hate mangoes, I wanted to try the ice cream version and see maybe there is some sort of tolerance. No, I, I bought it from some place to here in Sharjah and I wish I could have asked for my 20 dirhams back, but... That, 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 was the, that was that story. And you think he took a break right now? No, he went again with another Ooh, thing that everybody enjoys. And that's Persian cotton candy. Literally one of the best types of cotton candy. What I'm are sorry. You on? It's not. It's something about it. It's just, It's got this weird, dense sweetness to it that I. it just gets overwhelming whenever I eat it. Says so. the person with a sweet tooth. I, yes, ironic. But it's just, ironic. I'm sorry, but just I try and I try every time we bring it for, uh, from the old downtown Sharjah, and uh, like I, I just don't wind up eating it. I actually give them to my sisters. I'm like, you know, it's so good. And finally, Indian barfi, which I haven't tried. So it's too sweet, too dense. Mm. Uh, you, I don't know. Like you really need a taste for that. You know. I get what you mean because uh, Huda also says coconut or any anything with coconut or cinnamon, and I have to add that I agree with her. With the coconut part because sometimes when it comes to specific cultures and specific places where they rely on specific ingredients and coconut sometimes becomes too much especially since i just got into coconut i just started building a tolerance for it like i just started drinking um for example coconut milk and sometimes it gets too much especially when you um overcook it or it's a little bit too old so i understand that but cinnamon um i need to again bone to pick with huda as well because Cinnamon rolls We're making are enemies amazing. Today. Making enemies, but also making friends. Text us 4215 or do tell us exactly the things that you hate and you love when it comes to dessert. We'd love to hear from you. We'll give you a shout out as usual. I got I got a saying. Here, yeah. Hear me out. You know, um, you always you always gotta put a little salt in the sugar. How about that? Right? No? I think that's I think that's a no. Okay. <laughs> Not a, not a good start for the weekend, that's for sure. No, not, not at all. But it's okay. We still love and cherish Mikhail, despite his terrible opinions that are abundant. If you guys have missed out on them, always check out our podcast, Afternoon Karak. Search us wherever you listen to podcasts, and that includes SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, and Rami, and Spotify. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about Netflix partnering with Walmart to release exclusive merchandise tied to shows and movies including The Witcher, Stranger Things, and Squid Game coming up next right here on the Afternoon Karak. <sighs> Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha El Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. Yesterday we were talking about the new Witcher plushie from Netflix that is going to be basically Henry Cavill's version of Geralt of Rivia. And it basically grunts. And apparently, Netflix is going to be selling a lot more merchandise from its well-known series and TV shows. And that includes Squid Game, Stranger Things, and also more things from The Witcher. And honestly, I cannot believe it took them this long to do it. I think it has to do with uh, a previous report about Netflix shifting their strategy to really take advantage of the growing and established franchises on their streaming hub. Mm -hmm. Everything from... Stranger Things, uh, Bridgerton, there were, there were talks that they would make video games and it's actually happening. They're testing out a video game tab on some European versions of Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, only mobile games at the moment, but maybe they might do a little bit more indie stuff. And they also did buy out an indie studio to do that kind of stuff. And now they're expanding into merchandising by partnering up with the biggest retailer in the world, Walmart itself, to really just pump out as much customizable uh, you know merchandise and goodies for fans of these franchises I know it only makes sense that they do it because all these things have well all these uh, movies and TV shows have a cult following they have very strong fandoms especially with Squid Game becoming officially Netflix's most successful show 
ever. Yeah. And this is very interesting because every single show that comes out of Netflix for the past year and a half has been titled the most successful Netflix show ever. But then something comes up and it just pushes it off the podium every single time. So it just shows you that it only, you know, only makes sense that they do this. I am down for this. And I just hope that they probably eventually have some sort of um, their own Netflix store online that can ship out internationally because Walmart oh, does great. not. Walmart only has a U.S. base and it's very hard to get things across the entire world. So we're going to take it as sort of like a beta testing kind of thing to see how it works out. And then perhaps they're going to be pushing it out across the world. I mean, I'm telling you, I definitely want some Witcher merchandise and so many other merchandise. I mean, they're even going to do some for their reality shows, including Nailed It. So it is going to be super cool. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are excited for it. And we should be excited for at least um, interest in because Sony has piqued our interest because they could be working on a customizable controller with a Wii U style screen. Mm. So very interesting. Let's talk about this patent coming up next right here on the Afternoon Cutter. <sighs> Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al-Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95. I know that they're talking about this uh, patent or patent. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but I'm pretty sure they're talking. They're using the Wii U as a way to reference or at least basically explain to people how this very interesting endeavor from Sony is. And I find it ironic because a lot of people believe that the Wii U and especially the screen of the Wii U, like the actual small console that we can easily call the predecessor of the Switch was a massive failure. Yeah. But I find it very interesting that Sony is kind of dabbling with that. Yeah, interestingly enough, uh, looking at this uh, patent, there's just two diagrams. One that features a customizable touch interface. So normally, the, the ready the PS4 and the PS5 have a touchpad. Nothing more than just swiping your finger on it and mm -hmm. just tapping it. But to have a touch screen instead that has interactive elements and even a user interface uh, on a controller, I think that could be very intuitive. Uh, and just the possibilities for that could, uh, uh, it's just, there's a lot of potential in it. Yeah. And then there's also the, uh, the what we call, what they're calling it, the swappable and rotatable button cluster. So uh, the, you know how you have the directional buttons and the, yeah. the, the command buttons? Mm -hmm. You can actually rotate them. You know, to your own desired position. And even you can take the analog sticks and replace them with other types of analogs. And what I'm look, what this is feeling more uh, is like at, at the Microsoft's Xbox Elite controller, but with a lot more tech and a lot more sophistication built into it. It's very interesting. And at the beginning, when I was reading through this, I'm like, this is just... You know when they just make patents for or patents for random things and just keep them in the shelf? I feel like that's one of those things. But as I read the article, somebody mentioned that it could be something that could be used in certain games, such as uh, you know, the rumored Kojima Silent Hill game. And it could be something where you can customize, for example, some sort of adventure game or some sort of open world game, or like we said, yeah. um, a horror game where a survival game so that you can you know, basically customize it and make it feel as realistic as possible to an extent where you're kind of making sure that you're ready with your own stuff and you're ready to go into this adventure. Yeah. So it's interesting, but I think I'm going to stick with the idea that it's not something that they're going to be jumping on too soon. And perhaps it truly is the kind of thing they just have on the shelf just in case they want to bring it out. But I don't think they're going to bring it out. I, I, I believe also another thing that this tech seems like an, like I feel if this this actually comes out it will separate itself from uh, other controllers and so certain games can only function with that controller because it gives you more options mm -hmm. and that could divide players and divide the community because oh you can only play this game with this new highly more advanced PlayStation 5 controller. Yeah. But again, this is just a patent. This is just what we're looking at. Sony, they, they have all these wacky and interesting ideas. Mm -hmm. And it's so, like, we're just waiting for one of them to come to fruition exactly. anytime soon. There's the banana controller. Remember that Goodness. one? Goodness. <laughs> honestly, those are just insane. But like we said, those are just patents, and sometimes patents are just 
happen. That's all they are. We're going to be taking a short break. Coming up next after the sports headlines, we have got lots of things to talk about, including some Ant-Man news and so much more right here on the Afternoon Karak. Speculation. Gossip. Or hoax. Rumor has it. Electronic Arts, well, specifically EA Sports, has had a monopoly on the sport video game industry. You guys know them for FIFA since, I think, FIFA 19, Mm -hmm. 1996 or something. Till now, um, I disdain this franchise. (laughs) I hate all the shady business practices that it came with it. Matter of fact, you know, I was reading more into it, and I found out that that the very man who developed the... uh, a FIFA Ultimate Team a loot box system wind up being the CEO of EA Sports and I'm like I'm I mean just, it makes sense he is the man who brought in so much so money so infuriating he so started infuriating. a whole very interesting and somewhat shady um, business model for within the video game industry so obviously they're gonna promote him and make him the CEO yes it makes just, sense it's just it's when, a, when you see a bad guy get away with it anyway it seems that this time around I might feel a little bit of really? joy a little bit of happiness because really? EA Sports is actually having trouble with the FIFA commission specifically for the logo, the name, and the rights to Mm -hmm. the FIFA license. And uh, basically what's happened is that FIFA and EA Sports had a 10-year agreement uh, since uh, 2011, sorry, 2020, uh, 2010. And now it's coming. the agreement is coming to an expiration date. But for the last two years, FIFA commission has been demanding and they've actually doubled their amount to EA they want a billion dollars for every four years to use the license for FIFA and to even limit EA's ability to monetize beyond the game itself very interesting over here to be honest even though you are very much uh, on FIFA side I'm actually on the fence because I feel like they're Yes, um, EA Sports is problematic and has been problematic for a long time. EA in general has been problematic. But also, this feels like it's too much. It is way too much. Every four years, a billion dollars. Bear in mind, FIFA alone probably makes a billion dollars from the FIFA Ultimate team every year. Every year. So this is chump change. This is just being way too greedy at some point. Like, if it was 10 years, 1 billion for the next 10 years, I might understand and be like, yeah, that's fair enough. It's a big franchise. It is obviously it's their own thing. They have their own trademark, their logos, etc. But for them to do this every four years, that might be a little bit too much. And again, this is just a rumor for now. Yeah, but for me, I, why I want this to happen, weirdly enough, FIFA fans are going to attack me, is that it's, it, it will hopefully break that monopoly cycle and maybe bring another you know video game developer or publisher to step in and make an entirely new established series That's for FIFA. Not I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be hard. No. I don't think it's going to happen simply because they're still going to need FIFA's permission. And Mikhail, if we're, if we're talking about a, um, a big developer, maybe they might see something lucrative and be like, hey, if EA gives it away, we can jump in. And it's going to be the same thing. It's not going to be that much different. Now it's just that another developer is going to get a chance to do it. And it's, they're going to follow basically the same or maybe a similar sort of pattern. But if you're talking about somebody smaller, they're not going to afford that at all. I know. I know. It's just, it's uh, it's hopeful thinking, uh, wishful thinking. And uh, there's actually one theory that if EA winds up not getting the FIFA license, mm-hmm. they're just going to call future FIFA games EA Sport FC. I mean, it works. It works. It's but the they're same. Gonna, they're going to lose that tr- that very marketable label. You know? I think that just like how people just always... Um go for PES, which is something similar. It's basically the same game. It's a football game. The exact same game. Well, well, mm. more or less. I I think football fans fans can really tell the difference. See, I know. That's the thing. But that's where I'm getting at. If they just change the name, they're still going to have their loyal fans. People are not going to buy it again 20 years later just because it says FIFA on it. If they keep the same elements, if they still have the players and they keep on the same thing they've been doing, which surprisingly enough has been very lucrative for them, 
they're gonna be perfectly fine again it all has to do with the trademark and the logo I feel like if they lose it it's not gonna be much of a problem because just like I said just like how PES has its own fandom and loyal fans the same goes for EA's FIFA a name change isn't gonna be that big of a deal in my opinion I I would love to believe you on that but I feel like it makes the biggest difference and I want to see I want to see what happens because the agreement or at least it's this debacle that's happening is is gonna continue until the end of the year so until then mm -hmm. we're gonna wait until uh, there's some sort of official announcement from FIFA or EA Sports but Absolutely. it certainly does give me a smile to see that EA Sports is, uh, is is being asked to pay a lot more than they should. I mean I understand because I even have a bone to pick with EA and the way they're treating the Sims goodness i know it sounds like aisha what are you talking about who cares about the sims everybody should be caring about the sims but this is not the time to be having this rant because you're going to be moving on to the world of marvel we're going to be talking about ant-man 3 quantumania the upcoming movie that's going to be featuring jonathan major as kang first of all paul rudd he praises jonathan major and jonathan major is asked Will you kill Ant-Man? And he has an answer for that coming up next right here on the Afternoon Cutter. Pulse 95. Make a cup of tea. This is Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia. You're listening to Pulse 95. We are very excited, as is the entirety of the Marvel fandom, for the upcoming MCU movies. We have obviously the Eternals coming very, very soon in around a month, and right after that, we have a Spider-Man. Goodness, excited about this one. And then that big one, the big one that brings everything together within this part of this phase, and that is Doctor Strange. Just give it to me. Just give, give it, it to me. me. Please. I'm done. Here's my credit card. Let's do pre-order tickets. Mm -hmm. a premium access. If I can watch it now, <laughs> please, Disney, Marvel, honestly, anybody. Honestly, honestly, we cannot wait for that amazing movie. And the upcoming also MCU shows are going to be happening in between. But we have right after that, Ant-Man 3 Quantumania. I mean, Disney and Marvel have been pumping up the excitement about them, especially since, like we said, um, it's part of the upcoming phase. And it's also going to be featuring none other than Jonathan Major as Kang. Now, um, Kang is obviously, we've seen him appear in Loki. And again, we're trying not to ruin it for you, but it was, goodness, it was a doozy. Yeah. Now he was asked, Will you kill Ant-Man? What do you think, Mikhail? Will he can kill Ant-Man? Um, you know, dealing with multiverses, and now that the timeline has completely shattered, yes and no. He may kill one universe version of Ant-Man, but one other one probably steps in to perhaps stop him in some way. Maybe that works out, but then like we said, we are going to have um, the whole multiverse thing happening all the way in uh, the Multiverse of Madness and also within Spider-Man. Do you think they're going to continue with the multiverse thing in Ant-Man? Even though, yes, it's called Quantumania and we know that the multiverse thing was kind of first teased all the way back in um, Endgame and it involved Ant-Man and the, yeah. you know, the quantum physics and etc. And people have been thinking about it as well and again, trying not to ruin Loki for you guys if you haven't watched it. One, what are you waiting for? Two, again, no spoilers. But, like you said, kind of has something to do with the different versions of Kang, etc. Oh, yeah. But it's weird. We don't know. And I think it goes back to... I'm actually thinking, because Ant-Man has a daughter, and maybe something could happen. That has been hinted. That is true. You know, because, like, you know, Hawkeye, and then we have his daughter, Kate, stepping in. It, she's not his daughter. Oh. Kate is not his daughter. Okay. Kate is, like, somebody different. Right, okay. And Kate Bishop is different than... Hawkeye. I'm, not I'm, related I'm, to I'm him. glad we. I'm glad you're here because Hen. I know would have <laughs> completely. She would have been here yeah. to tell you that that is incorrect. But you are right. That is the reason why I feel like it's a 50-50 chance because one, Jonathan Majors does say we'll see. That's his entire answer, and he has read the entire script. That's one thing. And two, we are preparing for a whole new. Um, group and generation of the Avengers but I feel like if we got rid of Ant-Man already I feel like it might be too soon even though I feel like in my Ooh. in my opinion it might be that you know usually when it comes to the to them to those movies and whatnot to MC movies we usually get three or four movies for every character and then 
they get removed from the universe they get killed they get whatever it is etc but then I honestly genuinely feel like them getting rid of Ant-Man is too premature maybe they would put him in the sidelines that's fine Yeah. but getting rid of him too early which Ant-Man we're killing maybe it's not Scott Lang it's probably his mentor Hank Pym maybe it's starring Michael Douglas Mm -hmm. because he's the OG Ant-Man wait didn't he die he did not die Hint, we need him <laughs> to come die. and clean up things Wait, with. Our memories are terrible. I'm looking back. I don't think he died. Did he? I got to look back at that post credit scene. Back in Ant-Man 2, didn't he die? I need to remember that. We can't remember, Oh, my guys. God. Goodness. We uh, would like to apologize for that. We call Let's ourselves see. MCU um, fangirls, but apparently... Well, bear in mind, there's like 20, 30 films, now a couple of shows. Uh-huh. You, the, you know you what? Know. I, I think we need to MCU marathon very, very soon. Especially, I need to go back and watch Ant-Man, too. Especially Ant-Man, and especially since Venom is coming out this once. Well, came out last night, and people are probably gearing up to watch it. And guys, we're also going to be watching it over the weekend with you guys to talk about it next week. But, Mikhail, your quick Google tells us. I don't know yet. <laughs> Not fast enough. <laughs> you know what? We're going to be taking a break. And we're going to be cleaning that up and clearing that up upcoming in the upcoming uh, you know, segment. We're going to be talking about a very interesting and, in my opinion, super cool endeavor from a bunch of indie developers here in the Middle East who have made a fan translation of Breath of the Wild coming up next right here on the Afternoon Karak. <sighs> Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia On Pulse 95. A group of fan subbers or fan translators here around in the Middle East called Eternal Dream, they actually managed to translate the entirety of Breath of the Wild, Zelda Breath of the Wild, both available for the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch. And this is their first, obviously, uh, attempt at uh, tackling this game because it is a very long and massive game. So for that, you know, shout out to them for managing to do that. And I love it because I want to see more games translated into Arabic. Yeah, you know, uh, honestly, some of the older games that I know, especially on PC, live or die because of mod, mod community support and mm-hmm. stuff like this is is very much needed. And it's also like we have to appreciate these people. They put to imagine translating a game. Usually, a company have to hire an entire group of people, mm-hmm. a third a third party company of some kind, just to dedicate uh, the localization for it. And so you have to imagine somebody completely translating an, a AAA title game like this in Arabic is no easy task. Again, it's extremely taxing. It's an open world game and it's a very, very extensive and massive game. So shout out to them for doing it. I'm pretty sure that was exhausting. And again, if you read some of the translations, you might notice that there might be some small grammatical mistakes and some errors. But again, this is their first attempt at um, translating this massive game. They're probably going to be updating it within the next couple of weeks, months, and and years and like we said it is available both for the Wii U and also on the Switch so shout Nintendo out Nintendo yes needs to hire this guy for the localization of the next game absolutely I agree with them maybe they should en- include more uh, you know the ability or the choice to pick different languages especially in Arabic we've got Hint who says um Tisk Tisk Mikhail. She's oh. laughing. She says, No, Hank Pym is alive and well, and he was there at Iron Man's funeral. That is correct. We forgot about this. Oh my god. And she says, PS Marvel, please do not kill Ant-Man. Shout out to him. Thank you so much for saving us once again. We're also gonna be taking a short break and coming up next, we're gonna be talking once again about how you can be the winner of more than 7,000 dirhams up to 10,000 dirhams if you are a photography and videography um, you know hobbyist coming up next right here on the Afternoon Karak <sighs> Make a hot cuppa and relax It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha al Mazmi and Mikhail Atia on Pulse 95 Do you want to be the lucky winners of 10,000 dirhams? Then make sure you're tuning in because you might be lucky. If you are interested in videography and you have a drone, we have a competition for you brought to you by Omnis Media Gulf. 
called Sharjah from above. All you have to do is go around the Emirate of Sharjah and go around with your drone, obviously with a drone permit. Make sure you get that and take beautiful scenery across the Emirate of Sharjah. So not only the city of Sharjah, but the Emirate of Sharjah. So yeah, remember when you're uploading to Instagram, it has to only be 60 seconds long. The shorter the better, but remember, you got to be very creative with this drone video montage and it has to capture the beauty, the wonder, the grandeur of the Emirate of Sharjah. So really go out there in the city, outside the city, Khorfakan, Kalba, really just get creative. And remember, when you're uploading to Instagram, you have to mention us, tag us at Pulse95 Radio, as well as use the hashtag Sharjah above. There's two winning categories, 10,000 dirhams each for best cinematic style and best first person view. And there's even a third position, a runner up for 7,000 dirhams. Yes, you guys, you can be lucky. Go out and do that or throughout the weekend. You have until the end of October to join this competition. And we're going to have to bid you farewell because joining our lovely studio is going to be Anna Schofield and Big Haas keeping you company from 5 till 8 p.m. on Pulse 95. But you know what time it is, Mikhail? What time is it? Well, it's time for the Halo match tonight with my friends. No, Mikhail. <laughs> but yeah, it is time. Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. If you liked this episode of Afternoon Karak, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.